Good morning, good morning, and good morning, Metropolitan family and friends. I am Christopher Bonner, and I am elated to be your host. On this day last year, under the amazing leadership of our pastor, Reverend Lamar, morning meditations with Metropolitan came into existence. Sister Jacqueline Coleman, Sister Evan Taylor, Brother J. Gioni Palmer, and Reverend John Petty. We thank you, we celebrate you, and we honor you for your willingness to lead in a season that came with no blueprint, to give us a ministry space to be empowered, to be in a virtual community, and to be assured that God is still God even amid the unknown. Welcome to Morning Meditations with Metropolitan on our first year anniversary. We hope that you are enjoying the service this far. And if you are in need of prayer, please send your requests to the following email address, prayer.metro1518 at gmail.com. Throughout this week, we have been immensely blessed for meditations from the Girl Scouts. Girl Scouts do amazing things every day. They might start a self-confidence boosting movement, help protect the environment, and make their communities better in more ways than we can count. Check out the amazing ways the Girl Scouts are changing the world. This morning, speaker, we are elated for Sister Leah Hassel. She currently serves as a Girl Scout troop leader at Metropolitan, and she believes in serving the for the betterment of humanity. Sister Leah, the stage is all yours. Good morning. One of my favorite stories in the Bible is found in Daniel. And it's the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It's the story of when these three Hebrew boys are in a form of exile. They were moved from their home. He fired an order from the king, Nebuchadnezzar, to worship idols. When they refused, they were thrown into a fire that is heated seven times hotter and come out unscathed. However, the favorite part of the story for me is not that they come out unscathed, which is a testament to the power of God, of what he or she can do. But the part of the story that resonates with me and I find the most compelling is found in Daniel 3:16 through 18, which is their reply to the king for refusing to worship idols. They replied, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statues you, you have set up. What I see and take from this is that these three gentlemen with faith, faith of who God is, faith of God, what God can do, and faith of what God can do for them. And they're still holding on to their faith, although they are in exile away from their home, not in an ideal situation or circumstance. Their faith is still unwavering. And then the part which blows my mind is that they say, even if he doesn't, we will never serve you, God. Their faith is not transactional, based on what God can do. It's not even based on God saving them. They are real clear on who God is, can do and also clear that God might not do what we want. And it doesn't matter. They are still worshiping, following, trusting God. In John 14, 14, we find, ask anything in my name and I will do it. I'm sure we have all asked God for things and it hasn't happened. <laughs> you know, we, we fasted, we prayed. You know, I don't understand. I don't think any of us do. When God says no, and what he does, it doesn't do. There are also times when stories don't have a happy ending. Things hard to fathom and reconcile. Death of a child. Loss, hardship especially when we didn't do anything wrong. But it's in those times that I hope we can still praise God, have faith, worship, 
And remember that Jesus is real. God is with us and within us. Have faith in that we are loved. In Jeremiah 29, 11, we find, for I know that I have the plans, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, listen to you, and not harm you. Plans to give you a hope in the future. This is a phrase that some of us use to give us comfort and hope, but we usually don't take it in its full context. Jeremiah 29, 12 says, then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me. And you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. Jeremiah spoke these words to Jews who had been in exile after leaving the domination of the Egyptian and Babylonian empires. They were just lied to by false prophets saying that, they would be able to return home in two years. But the message that Jeremiah has given them is that you won't have to stay put, not for two years, but for 70. Yep, 70. The words were spoken during hard times and suffering, but the message is that he plans to prosper them in the midst of their current situation and not changing. What I'm finding a habit to accept is that yielding yourself to God and surrendering, you might find yourself in fire being led to the wilderness and exile, prayers not answered, or circumstances in which you have not chosen. I hope is that whatever situation or predicament we might find ourselves in, that we will still continue to have faith, trust, and a fortitude to keep on praising God, even if we are in a strange land, and to trust, no matter what the circumstance, that we can walk by faith, not by sight.